you enjoy it is it yeah so i mean no don't get me wrong even though i think i prefer be like when i was at usc i, I still do appreciate ncu mm -hmm. um musically shahai let's just start there you know big of you um because you know funny enough i wasn't in initially intending on being a part of shanghai i don't know if you remember this i don't remember tell me remind me how that went i don't remember, so, I don't remember your audition right so <laughs> so i got to ncu and i knew you i met you like in that summer before i, I went to ncu right so we we kind of had a little cool rapport going on um and you know you told me about shanghai you showed me the videos on youtube and i was like oh cool y'all sound good but I wasn't, I wasn't planning to do that. I remember when we, I remember sharing, the, I remember we were in a classroom. Yeah. Um, Robinson Hall. Yep. And I was just going through some of the, the videos. I remember that. Yeah. And I was like, yo, y'all sound great. And I think a part of me was like, yo, I don't think I'm good enough to be on this car. Like, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna make it. Um, <laughs> and then you told me, so you tricked me, right? Because you told me, that y'all were having auditions today and i should come through now i interpreted it as i'm coming to watch people audition <laughs> right so i show up at the room this was in um bb right uh -huh. so i show up and there was let me tell you who was in there when i showed up rajay danvers okay and he can sing right so he's in there doing all these runs and all these crazy <laughs> things i'm just like you were in the room. I was actually outside because once I heard him singing, I was like, let me not disturb y'all. Okay, okay. So I was standing out at, like, at the door, but I could hear everything that was okay. happening. Right? Eventually, um, I think y'all were finished and then y'all were just like playing around and stuff. So I came in mm -hmm. and he was just like singing all over the place. And I was like, cool, 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 cool. Thunders. Yeah, that's that's cool. This guy can sing. Okay, so people on the square can sing. I love that. Love to see. It. And then he left and it was just the two of us. And you were like, all right, ready now? And I was like, ready. I was like, ready for what? <laughs> and, and you were like, yeah, we're going to do your audition now. All right, so cool. So you're singing and you're like, you played a scale. And I was like, hmm? <laughs> I, I was like, Bill, I didn't, I didn't come here to audition you. You were, like, you were just like, yeah, you're auditioning. Um, and I was just like, all right, I mean, it's just the two of us. I'm a screech in here. You're the only one person who can hear. It's whatever. Um, and I, I auditioned and you were like, cool, you're, so suc you're successful. Um, you're an alto. Yeah, that's, that was the start of my Shahai journey. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so in reference to the question initially, um, uh -huh. with NCU, Shahai was a, a very big part of, of my journey um, at NCU. I think it, it, it held me spiritually a lot of the times. Um, you know, just, just I think blessing other people really blesses me. Um, so that was, that was a huge part of it. Uh, academically, I'm not going to lie, I had some great lecturers. I have to big up well, no, Dr. Mosquera, amazing, amazing psychology lecturer. She's she cares about her students. That's one thing. And um, she taught me in my first my first year at um intro to psychology. Is that it? Or principles um, of psychology? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was my most fun. That's my most fun class. She's dope. She's dope. Yeah, Trust me. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, you know, I had those those great lecturers, and I made I made great friends. Like, I think one of the things that I've realized in life is that hard times bring you closer to people. <laughs> um, and I know that with a lot of my friends, like the ones I made on dorm in particular, we were always broke, you know, at some point or the other. And it was a case where we would pull together, you know, to make things work. So if today I'm broke, everybody else is feeding me. If somebody else is broke, right, everybody's yeah. feeding that other person, that kind of thing, you know, it was just like a little community family kind of thing that we had. Um, yeah, so, so, so it was, a, it was, a, and as I said, when I said it builds character too, um, I think when it comes to having to challenge like lecturers and, and challenge ideas and that kind of thing, it kind of forces you out of your comfort zone and um, it helps you to kind of be able to, for me at least, stand my ground more. When it came to certain things so yeah gotcha, gotcha. all right so we meet we meet 2016 right <laughs> i'm a choir director um i trick you into the choir and thing and thing <laughs> at some point you didn't like me <laughs> right. <laughs> right right tell, talk to me about that 
Just <laughs> didn't okay. like L. Why is that? All right. Um. So. So you were talking to a friend of mine, uh -huh. right? Um, uh -huh. we, were, we were best friends at the time. And some of the stuff that she would tell me just gave me like, Dale is, Dale's not a, he's not a good guy, right? <laughs> um, and I think what happened was to, I mean, she's my best friend. So, you know, like her word is her word. I'm not really trying to hear nothing else, you know, period. Um, at least that, that was my thinking at the time, right? Um, and I was just like, yeah, so Dale is, Dale is trash. I'm not really trying to be friends with this guy. Um, and I, I, I think I was in a period too where I was having a lot of like mistrust for people. Um, trust was a really hard thing for me. So I was like, yeah, I'm not really trying to trust nobody anyway. So it's a perfect reason not to pretty much. Um, and I guess there were, you know, there were a lot of like rumors around campus about you as well. And I was just like, yeah better not to associate myself you know um so i, I started avoiding you mm. i really like i intentionally avoid you you know choir practice i'm there um if i was late and you talked to me too rough i'm like hey, this dude <laughs> um uh but yeah outside of choir practice like that was it we, like we really didn't have any interactions um i remember there was this one time i almost said something to you we were at uh, what was that thing? Deep patch or something like that? It was called uh -huh. that that yeah. poetry art. Poetry thing. Yeah. And Shahai was supposed to sing that evening, and I remember I actually remember that scenario very well. You chose a song. I don't remember what song it is now. You chose a song. And, yes. Uh -huh. And I was like, why are we singing that <laughs> at this event? I just feel like it doesn't fit. And a, a couple of other choir members were like echoing the same sentiment. Mm -hmm. So I came to you. Wow, that was wild. I came to you and I was like, yo, so why, why are we singing this? Like, why not like one of the other songs? And you were like, yeah, because it fits. And I like at the time, you, I felt like you were just like very like egotistical because you're just like, yeah, it, it fits. So we're singing. I was like, <laughs> I was like, you don't even go hear what I'm going to say. Um, and we had a little bit of a, a back and forth. And then I was just like, all right, this doesn't make no sense because we still get a song anyway, so whatever, right? Um, and that was the start of the event. At the end of the event, we were talking. It had ended, and there was a group of us standing there talking. And I was making a comment about musicians and poets. I remember very specifically. I was mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. musicians and poets, those guys tend to be trash or whatever, right? I said some, something to that effect. And like you heard me, I don't know, I don't know if you were in the conversation or you were just like really close to us, but you heard me and you were like, yo, I'm both of those things. What do you mean? And I don't remember exactly what I said, but I made a very snide remark. I was like, well, <laughs> yes. like proves my points or something like that. Um, and I think you asked me like, yo, what was that about? Or I don't know if you asked me on spot uh -huh. or if you texted me after and you're like, yo, what, <laughs> what was that? Um, and then we eventually got to talk that night. We met up at J Hall. Mm -hmm. um, it, was the same night. At, it wasn't the same night. It wasn't, nah, it mm -hmm. was actually probably like some months after, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I was still avoiding you. Because I knew you wanted to talk about it, but I was just like, no, I don't have nothing to say to this guy. <laughs> um, but then I was like, you know, let me let me actually talk to you, like hear what you have to say or whatever. And we actually so before we move on, before I, before we go to that night. So yeah, as a director, like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I just had like, all right. So I've gotten so used to being doubted mm. and kind of being second guessed, right? To the point where it's annoying. Even if, even if like, even if you, just you hypothetically, didn't like cross the line or anything, it mm -hmm. just piled on to all this doubt and second guessing. So it's just like. My my natural thing was just like shut it down, like like it's fits now. What are you talking about? And I feel yeah. like I feel like a lot of the time. All right, so Shahaya for me. The spirit of Shahaya is out of the box, right? Like naturally, when I'm not trying to do what's expected. I'm trying to do something that fits and works, but not in the way you would expect it, right? Mm -hmm. 
um, I didn't always do the best job of like selling that to the members for them to buy in. Right. My mindset was they should buy in because I'm the director and I'm, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like saying whatever. Or is a mixture of that and kind of, why don't you see it this way? Like, duh, like mm. that kind of thing. And kind of annoyed, annoyed at persons wanting to be in the status quo. But the status quo is what people naturally do. So if I right. want to be outside of it, like I have to sell them on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then your comment, that was when I was, uh, so for most of my university experience, matter of fact, all of my university, because that meltdown episode was after graduation. So all my university experience, um, and we'll talk about that another time. Um, it was two, there are two deals, right? There's the, the deal behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. And then the deal that I want everybody else to see, right? The deal that I put on display. Right. Now, unless you are behind those closed doors with me, I just felt like you don't have a right to accuse me of being that. Because you, you're you're relying on gossip, even though you're right, <laughs> even right, though what right. you're saying is correct. It was just like, and people talk and things get out. But my mindset at the time was like, it's like, as in my head, as much as what people are saying is true, it's like they might they could have just as well have been believing rumors that weren't true. So I felt I felt right. just as judged. <laughs> even though everything they're saying is, is true, right? Gotcha. So yeah, it was, it, was always, it was always like a defense thing whenever persons would call my name and certain things, unless they were behind those doors with me. And the persons that were behind mm -hmm. those doors with me were never the ones, I mean, they're obviously talking, but not to me. Not to so, your face, right? Yeah, so I was always defending, even though I was always in the wrong, <laughs> I was always just defensive about everything just the same because Basically, I just feel like you you just believed a rumor and you had no mm -hmm. right to believe the rumor. So then we reached the night where where we decided to talk and hash out things. Right. right. Yeah. Funny thing though, night. like that that night going into it, I was in like two head spaces. Cause I was like, a part of me was like, okay, you know, you really should give people the benefit of the doubt. Like you've never heard anything from him, you know. Um the other part of me was like, I'm just going here to prove to him that he's trash. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was, th those were the, the two things in my head going into it. Um, but once we sat down and started talking, I was just like, all right, let me just get rid of that second, second thing. Cause yeah, that's not cool. You know? And that's, that's very not me if I'm being honest. So let me just give you the benefit of the doubt. Like, let you know what I got to say and hear what you have to say. Um, be, being honest with you, coming out of the conversation, I wasn't a hundred percent convinced um, because I felt like, and and this is how I see life. Um, even when there's there's three sides to a story, you know, um, there's what this person says, what the other person says, and what actually happened, you know. Um, and coming out of the conversation, I was like, "Is that all I hear you think so? I believe that. You believe that? I believe that. Yeah." Um, is it possible for what this person says to be what actually happened? It is. It, it very much is. Um, just very unlikely. Because, I mean, a lot of the things that we experience are shaped by our perception of life anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so sometimes even if what you're saying is, is very close to what it is, you might miss some things that the other person would have, you know. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, coming out of the conversation, I was like, yo, I hear you. And what you're saying sounds sounds great. Um, but I still had a bit, a bit of hesitance moving forward. There was still a part of me that was just like, I hear you. But then there's all this other stuff that's still like, I'm still hearing as well. Um, and I guess I, I was very stuck in the idea. By too the way, of, this, is, this is called To Be Honest. What were you hearing? Um... I heard a lot of things, man. So firstly, I'm like, like, let me start with the, the whole best friend thing, because that's where we would have started. Right. Um, 
as far as I understood it, you were in a relationship and you were like talking to my best friend, like trying to get, I don't even know if you were trying to get in a relationship with her, but it was very like a, a romantic type vibe going on. Um, so there was that, I had heard that you you sleep with, every, you don't, not, I've, I literally never heard you sleep with everybody, but that was always the vibe. Like, yo, you just go around sleeping with people. Um, you, oh, all Shahaye females have had some type of encounter with you. Oh. Uh, or most. Most, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are like the general, general things that I was hearing. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I, I guess I was still like kind of stuck in, well, this is my best friend and this is her experience. So I can't like discredit what mm -hmm. she said um so yeah there was like a hesitance um going into it but I guess over time you and I would have had multiple conversations along the lines of this right. after that initial conversation mm -hmm. um and I think I would have said to you um you know I'm still kind of like I still question things um